Hey guys, welcome to another Java knowledge sharing session. In this video, we will discuss about all the different types of constructors, including default, noags, and parameterized constructor with examples. So without any further delay, let's start. Constructor is a block of code in any class, which is called when an object is created using new keyword. Let's take this example. Here we have employee as a class, amp is the reference name, and using new we are calling the constructor of employee class as here we are not passing any arguments to the constructor so it will check if a default constructor is declared inside the class otherwise compiler will automatically add a default constructor to the code and create the object of employee class and in case we have uh, declared uh, a constructor inside employee class without arguments then that code which is mentioned in that code block that will be executed and it is known as no arc constructor so mainly we have three types of constructors default no arc and parameterized constructors so let's see all these types with examples first one is default constructor we can have java classes written without writing any constructor inside them because if we do not provide any constructor then java compiler will automatically add the default constructor to the class bytecode so in this example we have a class book with one instance variable which is book name and a method display book name which does not return anything now we have not specified any constructor in this class as you can see and in the main class I will be creating object of this book class using new keyword. So at line 6 when new keyword is detected by a compiler it will check the constructor availability in the class and if it is not found then it will insert one default without any instruction inside the body and return the default values of all the instance variables. Uh, for example, in this case, we have only one instance variable book name, which is of type string. So null will be returned because string is having default value as null. So in case it was some int, then zero will be returned. Now let's run the program and see the output. So as mentioned, you can see in the terminal null is printed. So here uh, I am creating the object of a book using the default constructor. Even though this constructor is not available inside the book class, the compiler automatically added it. And on the line number seven, using this book object, I'm calling the display book name method from the book class, which in turn is printing the default value of book name because this book name variable was not initialized or not assigned to any specific value. Next is no arc constructor. The signature of this constructor is same as the default one, but the difference is it is declared by the developer instead of provided by the compiler. Due to this, we have some control over the statements which will be executed as part of object creation. We have this class employee where it contains one instance variable employee name of type string and a method to display the name of employee. Here you can see we have declared this public employee without any arguments. This is known as no arc constructor. This is similar to the default constructor, but we can write our own logic inside this code block. So here we are printing that no arc constructor is called and also additionally we are assigning a default value to the employee name. If we do not perform this assignment, the default value of null will be assigned to the employee, uh, which we have seen in our previous example. So in the main class, you can see at line number six, we have created our object of employee class using new keyword. And here we have mentioned the same signature of default constructor because it is same as no R constructor. But in this case, we have declared it inside our class. So this will be called instead of compiler providing a defa uh, default constructor on its own. And in the next line, using that object, we are calling the display employee name method from employee class, which will be printing the employee name. Now let's run the program and see the output. So as you can see, 
uh, from line 6 when uh, object was created then no arc constructor was called and the same statement which we have printed in the NOAA constructor that also got printed on the console and employee name uh, was initialized to the value of an text zone. So when on line number seven, we called the display employee name at that time, employee name was printed on the console as a text zone here. The last type of constructors are parameterized constructors. So a constructor with parameters or arguments is known as parameterized constructor. So in our uh, this video or other videos also, I will be using argument and parameter interchangeably. So we have here a class student with the student name, ID and the list of courses that a student is enrolled for. Signature of parameterized constructor is similar to the other constructor, but with small difference, it will have parameters which are required to be passed while calling that uh, specific constructor. Here we have the list of string. So we will discuss in detail regarding the lists in our collections tutorial videos. As of now, just remember that this is how a list has to be declared and to add the members to the list, we have dot add function as given as will be uh, shown in the main class. So here, if you see in the parameterized constructor, uh, it is same started with public without any return type and the name will be same as the class name. And here we are passing three values, student ID, name and list of courses. And inside the uh, body of this constructor, the past value are actually assigned to the instance variable. So this dot student ID, this means it belongs to the object that instance variable, but this normal student ID is the local variable that we are passing to the uh, parameterized constructor. Now let's move to our uh, main class. So in our main class, uh, first, because we need to prepare a list of string, which contains the list of courses. So this is how it is declared the list. Uh, and in the angle bracket, we need to define what is the data type of that list, what kind of data will be stored. This is the name of the object. And, uh, this is the implementation that we are using, which is array list. So here, uh, how to add uh, any component to a list. So dot add method is there. So after that, we need to provide what do we need to uh, add inside that list. So here you can see we have added three different courses, C++, Java and Python. Now to uh, create object using new keyword, we have to pass the required parameters. Uh, in the constructor in the same order and the type as given in the constructor signature. So here we have three parameters. So first one has to be of type long, which is a student ID and then a string, which is student name. And after that list of strings and all these values are passed on line number 12, where we are creating an object of student class using new keyword and we are calling the parameterized constructor. So we are passing 101L, which is a long value of a student ID, then name of the student and the list we have just prepared for the courses. In the next line, we are just displaying the student detail. So what we have printed in that. So in that, uh, it's a simple print statement, which is printing name, student ID, uh, co and the courses uh, enrolled uh, by the student. So let's quickly uh, run this program and see what is the output. So you can see uh, as per the uh, display student detail, we are able to see the past value, which is uh, name, student ID and courses enrolled. All these values when passed through the parameterized constructor, those values were copied to the instance variables. And here you can see we are printing the instance variable values, not the, uh, not any local variable values. So as I mentioned, like uh, the type and order we have to follow very strictly. So what if I do not follow that? What will happen? So suppose instead of long, I'm just passing 101 number. Then you can see compiler is giving me an error because uh, the type of constructor which I am calling is not defined inside uh, the student class. 
and compiler will also not provide any uh, backup for this uh, parameterized constructor so if you do not define any constructor then compiler will provide you the default constructor but in this case it will not provide you any constructor uh, which will help you to resolve this compilation issue so <clears throat> as declared in the student class you have to take care of the order as well as the uh, type data type of the uh, parameters that you are passing so as soon as i pass uh, the long value the compiler error will go similar for here suppose it's a string but uh, i want to pass uh, the courses the list of string so still it will give me the same error that this constructor is undefined so if you see uh, the benefit of using IDE is it can also tell you the quick fixes as well. So there are three types of fixes it is giving me, uh, three types of uh, suggestions it is giving me. First it is saying that uh, there is a constructor that it is able to find but the parameter data type is different. So it is asking me to change that constructor to the required parameter type. Second one is to change the type of courses to string to satisfy that the second parameter is string. And third one is to create a totally new constructor with this type of signature where I am passing long list of string and list of string. So that's it for the first part of this constructors video. So in the second part, we will cover a few more advanced topics in the constructors. If you like the video, please do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any future tutorials. Also, if you have any queries or suggestions, please do comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.